Here I show an application of differential scanning calorimetry to protein denaturation or protein unfolding. So the idea is you measure the heat capacity, uh, which is this curve right here, uh, and this axis as a function of temperature. The heat capacity goes through a maximum, which is the melting temperature where the protein unfolds and then goes back down here. So uh, at lower temperatures, the protein is folded, and at higher temperatures the protein then becomes unfolded. And so to try to understand this at a molecular level, I want to show uh, a, a simple model of this that, that helps us understand this, this curve. So here's a very simple model uh, of a small protein or polymer. We have the folded state, and then you have the unfolded macrostate, meaning that there are several ways of of having an unfolded structure, in this case, 4. And so when you heat it up, you go from uh, predominantly folded to predominantly unfolded. So the equilibrium is between folded and unfolded, and the equilibrium constant can be written in terms of a delta G standard. Uh, from this, we can derive the expression for the fraction or the percentage of unfolded protein here, which is then given in terms of, again, delta G standard, and the same for the fraction in the folded state. So to understand uh, this at a molecular level, we'll make a few more approximations based on the simple model. So for example, delta H standard, uh, we're going to approximate simply as the enthalpy of the molecule, meaning that when you uh, change the enthalpy on going from the folded to the unfolded state, what you're doing is uh, changing the interaction between these two atoms. So the interaction between the, the, the nuclei and the electrons and so forth. You can imagine this, for example, as being a hydrogen bond. Uh, so the only thing that contributes to delta H is the breaking of this hydrogen bond. And in terms of the, of the entropy change, uh, what's changing mainly is uh, the change in conformational entropy, meaning so here we have four ways, four conformations with the same energy, here we have one. So we can approximate the standard entropy change as a change in the conformational entropy given by the change in the degeneracy, uh, the conformational degeneracy. So entropy of the unfolded state where we have a degeneracy of 4 minus the entropy of the folded state where we have a degeneracy of 1. And so for this simple model, we can approximate delta G standard uh, using this equation. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, put some numbers in. The main number I have to put in is estimating uh, the change in uh, the, molecule, uh, the molecule enthalpy. And so I say the hydrogen bond, or whatever you want to call this, is worth uh, two and a half kilojoules per mole. So if I do that, I can plot the heat capacity for this system. That's this curve right here. And the fraction in the folded state and the unfolded state as a function of temperature. And what you see, that, you see is that even for this simple system, the heat capacity goes through a maximum. And the folded, the unfolded state becomes the most probable state as you increase the temperature. So there is a temperature in which the folded and unfolded state are equally probable. That's this point, and that's the melting temperature. Now, what you'll notice is that in this case, the melting temperature here is not equal to the temperature at which the heat capacity is a maximum. And that is because we're using a very simple uh, system, a very, first of all, it's a very short polymer chain. So you can imagine if I make the polymer chain larger, right, there'll still be relative, there'll still be to first approximation, one way to make the folded state. But now because you have a long chain, there are many, many more ways of making the unfolded conformation. So in other words, the degeneracy of the unfolded state for a protein is much larger than four. Uh, so if you make, if you input values for the degeneracy of the unfolded state that are much larger, 
then you see something very interesting. Uh, you see that the melting temperature, so where these two curves merge, where the unfolded and folded state are equally probable, right, that temperature becomes much closer to the temperature at which the heat capacity is a maximum. So in fact here, uh, where you have 10,000 unfolded conformation compared to one folded conformation, right, they, they match exactly. So the melting temperature occurs where the heat capacity has a maximum. So again, the heat capacity maximum here tells you when half of the protein is unfolded. Uh, you can also measure this melting temperature if the unfolded and folded state of the protein have a different uh, spectrum of some sort. Um, so, for example, for Barnes, the unfolded state uh, absorbs uh, light at a particular wavelength much more than the folded state. So, in essence, if you, if you uh, measure this spectroscopic feature as a function of pH, right, you get a curve here that looks very much like the fraction of the protein that is in the unfolded state. Right? So this blue curve is very similar to this. And as you can see, at the halfway point, where the unfolded state is 50% of the total, right, that temperature, which is the melting temperature, corresponds exactly to where the heat capacity has a maximum. So that means there's another way of measuring the temperature independent of calorimetry. Uh, and in fact, and as we saw, the, the fraction of unfolded can be written in terms of delta G standard changes, which, of course, is equal to the equilibrium constant. So, in essence, this curve here gives you the equilibrium constant as a function of temperature, and that is exactly what you need for the Venthoff method. So, from a change in enthalpy, so, sorry, from a change in the equilibrium constant with a function of temperature, you can extract delta H standard and delta S standard for this process as well. Okay, so another thing we can learn from this uh, relatively simple model is that a small change in delta H can have a big effect on the stability. So here I have uh, made a certain uh, choice of delta H and delta S, so the conformational degeneracy of the unfolded state. And so at this particular uh, choice of delta H and delta S, uh, almost 100% of the protein is folded at 25 degrees Celsius. So 25 degrees Celsius is 298 uh, Kelvin, that's roughly here, and as you can see, uh, almost 100% is in the folded state. Now, if I simply reduce delta H standard by roughly by 15 kilojoules per mole, and that corresponds to roughly the strength of one hydrogen bond, right? Then the stability changes a lot, right? If I again go to 300 uh, or 298 degrees and go up, right? I'll see that about 50 percent of the protein is unfolded at 25 degrees Celsius. So even one hydrogen bond can have a big effect on the percentage that's folded or on the structure of the protein. And that is because when there's a very big entropy change, uh, then the, the fraction or the equilibrium constant is very sensitive to even small changes in delta G uh, around the area where uh, these fractions are changing very quickly. Right? So a small change in delta H can have a big effect on the stability. Okay, so here's a question for you. Um, here we have a plot of, of heat capacity changes as a function of temperature uh, with their characteristic peaks, right? but uh, the peaks, the curves are different when I change the pH for this protein. So you have here at pH 11, 
all the way down to pH 5.4. And the question for you is, for wi at which pH is the change in standard entropy largest when the protein unfolds? So press the pause button, think about it, and when you're ready to answer, press play. Ready? Okay, so here are some measurements. Uh, there's no measurement for this pH, but for, for example, pH 2.7, uh, the, the standard entropy change is 540 joules per mole Kelvin, and that entropy change increases as you go from 2.7 to 3.5 to 5.4. So this curve here is the one with the largest entropy change. And the reason we know this without knowing these experimental values is that this peak is much narrower. Right? And as you notice from the previous curves, um, the larger or the, the narrower the peak, the larger the change in standard entropy.